McDonald's most expensive and ambitious project became the greatest border project on the planet. Over $15 billion were poured in, with 25,000 workers and thousands of machines working day and night to build steel walls as tall as three buildings, protected by AI cameras, ground radar, and drones patrolling 24-7. However, they're running into serious trouble. Bad actors are trying to destroy the wall, digging, cutting, even flying over. How did they do it? The answer starts right here. In front of us is the southern border of the United States with Mexico, stretching 1,930 miles from the Pacific Ocean to the southern tip of Texas. About 696 miles of this are considered the most closely monitored boundary on Earth. But we'll get to that later. The story of this legendary wall didn't start with Donald Trump. It's the result of three decades of efforts to control the border, spanning four U.S. presidents. It all began in 1994 when Bill Clinton launched Operation Gatekeeper, building the first fences in San Diego to stop illegal crossings. But it failed, because migrants just shifted their routes to the desert. By 2006, George W. Bush signed the Secure Fence Act, expanding hundreds of miles of steel fencing. But the project soon stalled due to massive costs and harsh terrain. When Barack Obama took office, he didn't tear the wall down but switched to an invisible wall, investing $4 billion, but the results still fell short of expectations. Then came Donald Trump, who saw the wall as not just about security, but as the perfect political weapon. He turned Build the Wall into his personal brand and a promise that haunted America. When Trump placed his hand on the Bible in 2017, the Build the Wall dream officially began. Between 2017 and 2021, the Trump administration built another 458 miles of new wall, mostly in New Mexico and Arizona, with plans for another 248 miles before he lost the election. Even though he once declared Mexico will pay for the wall, in reality, Americans paid over $15 billion for what became the largest, most expensive, and most controversial project of his presidency. This isn't just a fence. It's a steel fortress nearly 30 feet high, about as tall as a three-story building. Each steel post is about six inches wide, spaced just four inches apart. Enough for sunlight to pass through, but not enough for a person to slip by or climb over. Beneath the sand, the concrete foundation is deeper than a single-story house, reinforced with steel cores to prevent cutting or tunneling, making it nearly impossible to break through. To finish it, over 25,000 workers and machines worked around the clock and each mile cost between $25 to $46 million, five times more than the fence between Israel and Palestine, making this the most expensive border in the world. Above, 360-degree surveillance balloons float day and night, technology once used by the U.S. and Afghanistan, carrying AI cameras, ground radar, and drones, all sending data to a command center in Arizona with over 500 screens. On the ground, automated watchtowers use computer vision to scan the area, combined with infrared sensors, radar, and motion detectors. At night, over 2,000 stadium-grade floodlights light up the desert, creating a wall of light visible from satellites, brighter than the Las Vegas Strip. The steel is painted black, as Trump requested, to absorb heat and burn the hands of anyone trying to climb. At noon in the Arizona summer, the wall's surface can reach 140 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to burn skin in seconds. In San Diego, the fence is even doubled. Trump once proudly called this the most secure border on the planet. And he was right. Only the North Korea-South Korea border is more tightly controlled. Yet even with the world's most expensive and sophisticated wall, American media in 2019 still reported Smuggling groups found ways to climb, cut, or crawl through. Yes, with just a cheap angle grinder, they did what billions of dollars in security tech couldn't stop. From 2019 to 2022, Border Patrol recorded over 3,000 breaches, 
mostly at two hotspots, El Centro, 1,867 cases, and San Diego, 866 cases. That's not a small number, it's huge. Smugglers usually operate at night when few people are around. They call this the cat door method. They cut close to the base of the steel posts, and in less than 20 minutes, push open a gap just big enough for someone to crawl through. Some sections were even opened wide enough for two SUVs to drive through at once, like the shocking incident in March 2021. They work in the dark, covering sparks with blankets to avoid drone detection with lookouts stationed miles away. During the day, they use steel-colored putty to hide the cuts, making it impossible for cameras to spot. Border agents call this an endless cat-and-mouse game. They cut, we weld, then they cut again. Each weld costs millions, but just days later, new breaches appear. From 2019 to 2021, the U.S. government spent $2.6 million just to patch up these steel wounds. And in one 25-mile stretch, there were 71 welded spots. But everything seemed to stop after the 2020 election. When Joe Biden became president, all border wall construction was immediately halted. No demolition, no completion, just left exposed to the wind and sand like an open wound. As for Trump, when he left office, he still called it his unfinished symbol. He once declared he would return to complete the wall, making it proof of a protected America. At first, Trump wanted to build a solid concrete wall, as sturdy as a fortress. But the Department of Homeland Security convinced him to choose a see-through design, making it easier for patrol agents to observe. After Trump announced his re-election bid, the wall once again became a political symbol for America. Remember, we said this wall is nearly 30 feet high, narrow, and so hot it can burn your skin, Yet people still found ways to get over it. They didn't need high tech. Just a homemade wooden ladder or a few steel rods tied with rope was enough to beat a multi-billion dollar project. The steel posts, spaced four inches apart, are just right for hooking a ladder. They climb up like electricians, slide down like firefighters, and sometimes fall like meteors. One wrong move from 30 feet up can break a leg, a back, or even kill, but they still do it. For them, the wall isn't a barrier. It's a test of survival. America responded fast, adding anti-climb plates, hooks, and barbed wire. But just weeks later, these accidental climbers defeated it all with rope ladders and homemade iron hooks. It's almost a joke. Billions of dollars beaten by a few scraps of metal. And when the ground was no longer an option, they started digging. Literally. Between Tijuana and San Diego, U.S. Border Patrol found over 40 tunnels in just three years, about one new tunnel every month. You heard that right? A new tunnel every month, like a secret underground project between two countries. These tunnels aren't just hastily dug with shovels like in the movies. The longest, found in 2020, stretched over 8 miles, went down 69 feet, had high-voltage electricity, rail carts, ventilation, elevators, drainage pipes, and even an entrance hidden under a pool table in a warehouse. Its unfinished branch was nearly 6 miles longer, meaning they were caught before they could finish. Since 2006, the U.S. has found at least 15 complex tunnels equipped like mini subways, mostly in Otay Mesa, where the soft clay is easy to dig and warehouses disguise the entrances. In some cases, the tunnel is about four feet wide, as deep as a six-story building, with electrical panels, hydraulic tanks, concrete doors, repainted and recarpeted after each use. By law, the U.S. fills its side of the tunnel with concrete, while Mexico handles the rest. But just months later, another tunnel pops up a few hundred yards away. Observers call this the Underground Cold War, where for every yard of concrete the U.S. pours, another yard of tunnel gets dug on the other side. At this point, people had to admit bitterly, the wall can block bodies. 
but it can't block human ingenuity. But remember, after the project was stopped, hundreds of miles of border wall remain unfinished. In many places, the terrain was so tough they had to blast through mountains. But then the government changed. Plans were halted halfway, leaving huge steel panels piled up in the desert like the scrap heap of an unfulfilled dream. Many sections had finished grading but no fence, creating natural open doors. For border crossers, in the Rio Grande area, hundreds of private landowners refused to let the government build, turning the area into a de facto legal crossing point. In southern Arizona, a series of technical problems emerged. Missing floodgates, no emergency access, and no special panels for dry creek beds. When heavy rains came, the water was blocked, washing away soil and rocks, causing dozens of steel panels to tilt, bend, and need temporary repairs. As a result, the wall is no longer continuous, but broken up by dozens of gaps, where migrants just follow dry creek beds or empty canyons to cross the border. And then, a bigger question appeared. If the wall can't be climbed, cut, or tunneled under, can water beat it? The answer lies in the toughest part of the entire border, the Rio Grande River. Of the total 1,954-mile 1 length, 1,255 miles run along this river, a majestic natural boundary, but nearly impossible to control. You can't build a wall on water. The current is strong, the water is deep, full of rocks and thick vegetation. Every construction attempt has failed against nature. In 2023, Texas tried a new initiative, a 984-foot floating barrier made of giant plastic buoys to block river crossings. They called it a humanitarian measure. But just a few months later, a federal court ordered it removed for violating national environmental laws. And the barbed wire and floating nets Texas added? Migrants still got through and even live-streamed their river crossings on social media, almost as a way to mock the effort. So the question, is the wall useless, isn't simple. Experts say the wall only works when combined with sensors, radar, AI cameras, and rapid response teams. In reality, many breached areas weren't due to a weak wall, but a lack of surveillance and manpower. Still, the Trump wall is far superior to the old fences, but the price is huge. $15 billion to build, plus hundreds of millions in maintenance every year. When people have climbed the fence, dug tunnels, and cross the raging Rio Grande? Do you think they'll stop? Wrong. We still have the sky. Yes, they really did it. On April 24, 2015, U.S. Border Patrol discovered a drone carrying 28 pounds of drugs, worth nearly $1.5 million, flying from Tijuana into California. The operator on the other side quickly cut the signal and disappeared, leaving the package to drop in the desert. That was the start of the drone war. With just a $200 drone bought on Amazon, anyone can fly across the border at night, dropping contraband, cell phones, or data with no trace. Higher-end drones, with six to eight motors and costing over $5,000, can carry up to 35 pounds, about the weight of a suitcase full of cash. Since DJI launched its consumer drones in 2013, They've been redefined from wedding videography to dropping contraband into prisons and finally flying across the U.S.-Mexico border. In January 2015, a DJI S900 crashed in Tijuana, carrying $43,000 worth of drugs, proving that the steel wall can't stop what's invisible above it. The problem is, the U.S. is almost powerless. Federal law prohibits jamming signals or disrupting GPS as it could affect civilian aircraft and emergency communications. That means border agents can't shoot down, jam, or hack drones. The only option left? Catching drones by hand. Yes, in the 21st century, the world's top tech superpower has to use nets, poles, and ropes to fight cheap flying toys. Back on the ground, where America once believed steel and concrete could solve every worry. 
In 2017, in the California desert, eight wall prototypes went up, four solid concrete and four see-through steel for easier surveillance. The message was clear, no one can climb this. Trump said it with the confidence of a project that had sealed every technical gap. Then reality gave a tough test. An eight-year-old girl climbed a replica of the wall in 17 seconds. The climbing community joked, you're confusing mountain climbers with political climbers. That moment exposed the project's central paradox. The more impenetrable you claim something is, the more people try to challenge it with wooden ladders, iron hooks, tunnels, drones, and sometimes just a pair of small hands. In the end, the wall doesn't just divide the border, it divides how Americans think about security, humanity, and the future. So, what do you think? Is this wall a necessary shield or a mirror reflecting our fears? Should we invest more in walls or in people and smarter systems? Comment your thoughts below. Hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episodes. We have many more walls to decode.